Materials I use will be in the description box below, but this is a Doll Zone Honey, the winged version, in peach resin that I end up painting a light purple and then doing some gradients with her ears and her arms and legs. Taking the doll apart was only difficult around the ankles because of the S-hooks and how it was made, um, but it's always nice to see these dolls for the first time when you're taking them apart, seeing them piece by piece. Very cute sculpt, really like it. Here I am trying to get the feet off. <laughs> I was attempting to try to keep the left leg, the right arm, right arm, right leg, all of that, try to keep those pieces all together so I wouldn't get confused with which joint went where. So what I ended up using, um, well, I actually didn't end up using was the Gator Fine Sanding Sponge block thing. I ended up using, just using the yellow Ace 220 Grit Fine Sanding Sponge. And then, you know, I have my gloves on here and I have my 3M respirator with the, uh, what is it? I think it's like a P100 cartridge. Again, all that information is going to be in the description box below. Uh, went outside to do some light sanding. Don't have to sand very hard, just lightly over the whole surface of the resin pieces. Um, the only parts that took the longest were like around the ears and the mouth and nose and little fingers and toes. But just enough sanding to just take off the shine. There wasn't much that actually had to be done. There wasn't actually really much dust at all. And then after I was done with that, I took alcohol and paper towel and just wiped off any remaining little bits of dust or um, any, make sure there was no oils or any bits on the resin pieces. And then I got all the pieces assembled on some wooden dowels and hung up on some wire and whatnot for the smaller pieces so that when I painted them, no sides were gonna be touching, touching anything. Um, here's the materials that I used. So I mixed one part and one part multi-purpose sealer, the Deco Art multi-purpose sealer, and the Apple Barrel Outdoor Indoor Multi-Surface Acrylic Paint, the purple paint, together. And that's what I used for the first layer on the resin, using one of those makeup sponges, the disposable little um, triangle wedges was the closest thing or something that I've used since I've gotten to the hobby uh, for face-ups and things for applying sealers to dolls and whatnot. It leaves a pretty even surface compared to uh, not using an aerosol for applying paints and whatnot or brushes for that matter uh, for overall coverage. So of course it's going to be up to you how intense you want a paint to look. Um, but like I said, I just used this for the first layer, the multi-purpose uh, multi deco art sealer, and then the uh, my acrylic paint. This one was a multi-surface indoor-outdoor paint that I used. But then after using that for the first layer, I waited maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes in between each layer. Maybe not that long, I don't know. I was watching Netflix while I was doing this. So in between there, I probably didn't go through that many episodes. Maybe it was more like 10, 15 minutes, I don't know. To whenever the paint was not tacky to touch I just applied another layer and when I did that I ended up just applying just the acrylic paint after that so here you see the colors more intense and it's up to you how many layers you want to do to make it as uh, intense as you want it to be how solid you want the color to look or how intense so I just ended up putting layers on there uh, so it's probably like three four probably no more than five to six layers, five layers on each each piece. Um, I didn't keep count, I just was just going about my way doing this. And then I decided I wanted a little more depth, so that's when I just decided to use the Folk Art Color Shift in the Shimmery Blue Violet Flash, is what they call it, uh, for the legs here. You can see up the calves and on the hands and on the feet. 
um, because I wanted a little more depth. I thought I just wanted her just a solid lilac or, or wisteria purple, but then I wanted a little more to it, so that was last minute. I also put it on the ears, and then after I was done with all that, I finished everything off with two to three layers of the Deco Art Americana Dura Clear Satin Varnish over the whole doll, and I waited. 20 to 30 minutes in between those layers and then after I was done putting on the last layer I left it alone for probably 10 to 12 hours quite a while so just to make sure that everything was set for sure um, so here I am taking it off of all the wooden dowels and off of all of the uh, little uh, wire pieces I had the hands and feet hanging up on very satisfied with how it turned out um, this was a satin varnish. I would have used a matte or the ultra matte if I had any on hand But I just wanted to get it done because I've been researching what I wanted to use for weeks and then Just looking at what I had and just wanted to just see if I can get something to do what I wanted it to do um, Without having to use aerosols using like, you know, a automotive primer or something like that rust-oleum and all that other stuff and I wanted more uh, variety in paint colors so you know <laughs> acrylic paints um, but there you could use matte so she looks shinier than um, well shinier because I'm using my my filming lights and all that so there's a lot of lighting here in this area but just an everyday lighting carrier carrying her around my room and whatnot she she doesn't look as shiny but of course you can use a matte so it doesn't end up as shiny just the Dura clear matte or ultra matte varnish here's the hands you can see a little bit of the shimmer, but really excited about how that turned out. Um, I'd seen like people dye their dolls in gradients or doing ombre like Miss Mantis dyeing dolls like that or whatnot, and I always thought that that was really neat, really cool. Um, but I was glad to be able to achieve this with just acrylic paint. And again, this is pretty durable. Like I can take my fingers and just scratch over her face and everything and nothing's happening. Now, when I was putting her back together, of course, if a S-hook were to slip or something and to scratch against like a joint or something like that, yeah, something that's uh, putting pressure and has a sharp um, or pointed edge is going to take this off. Um, not too easily, but it, but it will. Um, here's the joints in the leg. So hopefully those will hold up well over time. I'm going to have to see in the next few weeks how well those hold up. Just, you know, around the arms, the wrist, the knees, the, the uh, ankles. But here she is, all put back together in her wisteria glory. Very cute, very excited about it. Carried her around the house for a while. Didn't want to put her down after I after, uh, got her all painted up. Just very excited about how everything turned out. This is not permanent. Um, I was uh, doing some tests on some junk resin and was able to take it off after doing the same steps I did here with the same materials. And I was able to rub it off with a non-acetone nail polish remover. And then I was also able to take it off with an acetone nail polish remover, which worked even quicker than the non-acetone. So something to consider. Could probably before sealing the whole doll. Um, I've never used an aerosol to seal face-ups or whatever. Um, but you, what you could do is seal the whole face with the... Um, makeup sponges with the satin varnish is what I'll probably end up doing after I do her face up uh, just to make it more permanent might even make a more durable face up because I was using um, I think it was like I can't remember what I was, what I was using but I, I don't use like Mr. Super Clear or anything like that to seal face ups and, and blushing and all that I, I sponge it on with these makeup brushes but one thing to consider if you're changing the face up or doing anything like that um, you might want to be very confident in what you're doing because, like I said, acetone and non-acetone nail polish removal will remove this paint if it's left on there. It's going to eat through it. It's going to take it off. The resin underneath ends up perfectly fine. It turns right back to the peach resin, but it'll take this paint off. Uh, the good thing is it's not that difficult to put back on, especially if you were just doing the head. It's better than taking the whole body apart and putting the whole body back together. So if you were to take the face up off, maybe use the non-acetone nail polish remover because that doesn't um, doesn't take it off as quickly. And maybe you can just like 
dab pieces with like a q-tip if you make a little mistake or something I mean with this you could probably use like a gouache and pencil lines and all that before sealing the whole face um, because it's so well it's a varnish you can just use water and a damp cloth and just wash wipe off like a gouache or like watercolor pencils or something like that so I'll have to experiment with that but yeah here is the before and the after thanks for watching